edition of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Weekly Podcast with your hosts, Dave Negri. This program is dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, roof cleaners, and business owners in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over the competition. This program supplies you with information that the competition doesn't even know exists. This session brought to you by ContractorsSecretWeapon.com. This is Dave Negri with Contractor Secret Weapon, and today I have Joan Stoken. And Joan helps entrepreneurs and practitioners experience the freedom from struggle personally, professionally, and financially. She's the expert when it comes to understanding how emotions learned in our early childhood can affect a person's business and financial outcomes. Imagine that. Thousands has benefited from her groundbreaking book, Build Your Money Muscles, and her online programs. And Joan's latest highly acclaimed program, Rewire Your Brain for Prosperity and uh, Financial Freedom. And, of course, uh, Joan has her own podcast, too. So um, I like when she says, Build Your Money Muscles. Uh, for years, Joan says she suffered from a long list of physical, emotional, and financial problems. And after giving uh, away all of my possessions, an extended uh, spiritual journey connected me to the deeper parts of myself and led me to everything I need to find health, well-being, and peace of mind. So I just want to, uh, Joan, I want to thank you for being with us today. And it's, it's kind of funny on how to get you back around. You, you gave up everything, which is not really a necessity, but it was part of your necessity. It's what I had to do because life wasn't making a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, uh, the doctor had told me that I could never be healthy, that, <laughs> that, I, wrong, huh? <laughs> that I uh, – yeah, and I had this uh, screw you attitude. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's like that's not my story. <laughs> and, and, but I, I was brought up in an era where women were, were just supposed to get married and have children. And, you know, I tried the marriage thing twice and it was much too much laundry and (laughs) that didn't appeal to me as a way of living. And I was sick. I was emotionally in bad shape. I and and I had started meditating in 1972 and had really started to get in touch with that inner guidance. And so when I got to the point where I really saw no, I didn't see where my money was coming from. I, it just didn't make sense to me. And to me, the logical step was to give everything away and go on a journey. Now that wouldn't be a logical step for most people. No, but uh, you know, (laughs) what's works for you doesn't, I mean, because you need to do that. I mean, everyone else has to, because I'm not giving, I'm not, I'm not starting all over again for nobody. (laughs) Right. And so, so it was right for me and it was wonderful because I really came to trust that answers would always be there for me. I actually wrote a book called the search for connection a spiritual journey to physical, emotional, and financial health. And when I was going through this journey, I kept a day at a glance diary because I knew I was in the middle of an interesting story (laughs) (laughs) and I'd have to tell it. And so here we are, you know, 40 years later and, and I finally published the book because I was a little concerned because I've developed this persona of a, of a businesswoman and here I'm talking about doing energy treatments and 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 hearing voices, you know. So I was a little concerned about telling the story, but once I told it, it was like gave me real permission to be who I really am. Makes sense. So, um, you know, one of the things that I try to teach is help people find out who they really are, so they're not trying to live someone else's life. Because you can't reach your full income potential until you're living your life. And a lot of people are not living their own life and they make a lot of money, but that doesn't mean they're happy inside. Right, right. They feel, they feel trapped by the very thing they have created. I, you know, I've talked to a number of successful business people who when they get to their 50s or so, they retire because they don't want to do that anymore. 
and and you still have you know 40 years left what are you going to do yeah. so I, I, and it's amazing how many people get onto the personal growth path when they're in their 50s or even older cuz they know that they've got uh, they don't have their whole lifetime in front of them and they want to get it before they die. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely because I remember uh, probably back 2005, 6, 7, 8 during the real estate boom, you know, um, or the the boom to the bust. Yeah. Um, we had, uh, had been in business and we were buying and selling houses and made a ton of money. But you know what? I hated it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I really hated it because I wasn't um, – it just wasn't, I mean, everyone goes, well, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not crazy. I mean, the money was great. You know, one day you're a millionaire, and of course, when everything busts, the next day you're broke. But it's immaterial. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, right. Because I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't having a good time. So right. So it, it, the money really is immaterial. Right. But most, you know, we, are, we live at a time when money has become a focus. Sure. As if it matters. And... Uh, if you look at, you know, who's in charge of the country right now, it's all people who have made billions of dollars and don't seem to be satisfied with what they have. You know, it, a lot of people talk about under earning, but I think there's another condition called over earning that is just as serious as under earning because over earning is no matter what you have, it's not enough. Right. And that can drive you really crazy. You know, it's always looking for that next thing and where your whole sense of self and all your validation comes from how much money you earn and what you own. And, you know, studies have shown that people who are lower income people are actually happier than wealthy people because what matters to them is family and connection, and love, and, and you know, someone asked, I saw an interview with Warren Buffett and, and Bill Gates, and the person asked them how they defined wealth, and Warren Buffett said, it's not by how much money people have, but how much love they have in their life, mm-hmm. and that's very often what's missing, is these childhood experiences where there wasn't good bonding with the family and and there was abuse of any kind. And so the people start looking for connection in other ways. And one of the ways that humans connect is by handing each other money. That money says, I appreciate you, I acknowledge you. But when you've never felt like you had enough as a child, that feeling is going to hold over that feeling of longing because babies need to be touched. And if they don't get the touch and connection they need, the feeling of longing becomes a habit. And so it never goes away no matter how much they get. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I know most of us go into business, most business owners go into business because we wanted to uh, create a better lifestyle for our family than we had. Uh, and do this and, and do other things and you know just we 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 chase we chase the dream and you know the dream is like you know that corporate success ladder in a sense right. because when you get to it you find that you're leaning against the, long, the wrong wall right and um, particularly in this country you know people feel they haven't got enough I spoke to someone the other day who felt like there was never enough. Turns out she has a good job. Her husband has a good job. um, And no matter, they they haven't learned to feel enough. Mm -hmm. And, And how sad that is that in a country where we, you know, even, you know, now it's a lot of people are living on the edge. But we're always wanting that new TV and the bigger car and, I drive a 19, a 2015, 2005, I'm sorry, I get the the years mixed up, a 2005 Toyota uh, uh, Solera convertible. I love the car, right? It's now, what, 12 years old? Yeah. And it doesn't, and when I bought it, it only had 45,000 miles on it. It now only has 60,000 miles on it. 
what the heck do I need a new car for? Right, and, and, I, and I agree. I have a, a pickup truck that I bought uh, probably three or four years ago, and I love the pickup truck. Matter of fact, I look at all these other cars, and I'm going, gee, you know, I was thinking about maybe I'd buy that someday and buy that. And I'm going, you know what, I'm never going to leave my pickup truck because I love it. Yeah, right. So, so it's, it's your perception. When I, there was a time way back when when I was selling uh, water purifiers, I think or that's what it was. And, and I'd go into these homes in Orange County, California, where I lived at the time, and they'd be these big, fancy homes, and I'd go inside, and there was no furniture. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, our, our values have become so corrupted, along with all the corruption that exists. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we haven't been taught to love ourselves, to be happy with what we have, um, to care for each other. I mean, this whole corporate thing is all about profits, profits, profits. Right. And I don't see that profits make you happy. No, there's too many other things. There's too many other ancillary things that actually make up the, the whole thing to make you happy. And, and like I ask a lot of guys, you know, they'll say, you know, about their profits and and. And, and stuff like that and, and I'll go well you know I want to grow my business I want to get bigger I want to get better and I go well what's stopping you I don't know I said well you know have you given yourself permission to succeed and that's a very good question and so what I try to do with people is say okay you're not happy with where you are where do you want to go and how can you get there the problem is people crave something they don't have and very often don't create a plan for getting there. And what I see with business people, it's amazing to me how many people don't take care of their money. And since most of the craving is for money so they, they can have more of these things, they don't take care of their money. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there's a guy, Marcus Lemonis, who has a show on, yeah, CNBC called The Profit. Yeah. And he says over and over again, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And if you don't know your business, it's pretty hard to, you don't know your numbers, it's pretty hard to make really good uh, spending decisions and saving decisions. And I had this in the 1980s, I had this really big business called Jones Crystals. And I was, the first person to, to sell crystals and minerals for healing and meditation nationwide. I had a line of stones called Jones Stones that were in 600 stores. I was mailing out, this was before the internet, so I was mailing out 50,000 catalogs at a time. Oh my. And I was bringing in $50,000 a month in today's money. And I wound up going bankrupt because I didn't know how to manage cash flow. So it's not how much money that comes in, it's how you manage the money that you have. Right. And, and, you know, I remember going to the bank and saying, I have reached my level of incompetence. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't say to me, you know, you have to learn how to manage cash flow. No, can we give you a loan, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so one of the things I really learned to do is manage cash flow. I recently switched from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. I'm not sure I'm going to stick with it because it, it's so incomplete. You know, they admit that it's not the same as the desktop right. because I need to know my numbers on a daily basis. And I'm finding it hard to do that. And within the next week, I'm going to make the decision whether to go back to desktop. Like because I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I got the, the I'm going to call my accountant today and find out what he thinks because um, I got it because I want people to be able to help me yeah. with some of the bookkeeping and I need QuickBooks Online for that. But it's, it, it's really difficult and I spent a lot of mine integrating Infusionsoft with QuickBooks Online. Oh, well, there's but, the first problem. Infusion. Well, it did no, a very kidding, good I'm job. No, they, no Infusionsoft it, is great if you know how to use it. I'm, uh, and I'm, I know how to use it, and I, I found someone who is really good at integrations. Awesome. And awesome. so all my orders are bought, brought into uh, QuickBooks Online, and 
I need to know every day where I am financially. Oh, it makes and, sense, you know, because yes. that's, that's an integral part of your life. And I know, you know, lots of business owners that uh, just, oh, they take a look at their checkbook and they go, oh, I got money to spend. Or they look at the bank balance. Yeah, they're the bank balance. Yeah, they're the bank balance. Right. They don't and, think about what they've got written or coming or, you know, on automatic. It's, you know, I love automatic right. pilot, but uh, right. I like it for and, me, not for everybody else. Right. And and the reason people don't look at their bank, they don't really keep track of their their money is because when they look at their bank balance, they don't go, oh, well, look what's in the bank. They go, oh, my God, I should be making more. Someone my age should have reached a different different level. Yeah. I, I haven't reached my income potential. So all this shame comes up, which has nothing to do with the money. It's all about the shame you began to feel as a child. <laughs> yeah, it's got to start somewhere, right? And that's where it starts. It starts very early. Yeah. I know in my family – Girls had less value than boys. And the fact that my father called me Jonathan for the first 10 years of my life <laughs> did, didn't help any. That was a ego booster, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And, and so getting over that sense of less than, and I had two very dynamic brothers. One was a big Hollywood producer and one became a very successful businessman. And – I had to learn to get over that sense of myself as less valuable than them because that sense of myself as less valuable was affecting my potential to not only earn money but to keep it. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's important because um, it's to keep it. You know, I always said it's not how much money you make. How much you keep. It's how much you right. keep. Right. And so many men were brought up in – and I assume your, your, the business that you work with is more male-dominated. Would you say so? I would say so, yeah. 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 I mean I have, a, I have a client who happens to be a, a general contractor and it's a female. And, and she comes up against the male-female issues all the time sure. Beca- sure. because they don't take her seriously. And she has to fight for everything she gets. And when, when, you're, when you don't look at these background issues, it's going to affect your ability to reach your income potential. I mean, that's why I put this course together, the Rewire Your Brain course, because people have learned or not learned how to, how to deal with their emotions. And everybody's got them, whether you want them or not. Right, right. <laughs> They're there. And instead of saying my emotions are wrong, very often religion teaches that anger is bad, that it's, it's not a good thing. Well, I don't put good or bad on emotions. They're just emotions. They're, just, they're there. And yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, because I mean, fear a lot of times is just uh, it's the fear of the unknown or what's going to happen. But you know, and, and, I've always and that's said, brain science. That's yeah, brain science because brain you're, science. A, you're amygdala. This little thing you've got in your brain hates the unknown. Yeah. And so as soon as it sees something that's unknown, it goes danger, danger, and it's going to stop you from moving forward. So once you understand the brain science, then you can say, well, there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, I just have these habits that aren't working for me, and I can use this simple system Mm -hmm. for changing those habits. And it's the, the system that I use is recognize, release, replace, and repeat. In other words, once you yep. can recognize the habits and you can say to yourself, well, what would I rather be feeling instead? What would I be th- rather be thinking instead? What would I rather be believing instead? Because all of your thoughts, beliefs, and emotions are just habits. And once you put it in that context, then you can look at why you're resisting creating new habits because that's part of it. Yeah. But because your amygdala is going to tell you it's dangerous to change. Right. But yeah. once you understand how to change the neural pathways in your brain, then you're not thinking there's something wrong with me. Right. And, and, we, and we have to change because if we don't have to change, 
then we're going to stay exactly where we are. If, 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 right. You're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. Right. And so, and I think personally that this is difficult to do alone because you have this, this sense of self, this identity. And when you start changing, it changes your, it's a threat to your identity. It's also a, a threat to your position in your peer group and your position in your family of origin. I was the identified patient in the family. So my life position made everybody else feel good. because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the sick one. I was the broke one. I, right. So as I started getting stronger and making more money, it affected the other people in my family. And what happens when you start changing, people in your peer group, people in your family will start pushing, pushing back. They'll start teasing you and, you know, because they don't want you to change. No, it's like that old, I remember growing up in a lot of the seminars we went to, they were talking about crabs in a bucket. Yeah. You know, you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and every time one tries to gra- gra- go out, the others grab them and pull them back in. And that's just like it, That's exactly what it is. I've never heard that before. It's wonderful. I will use that again. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, do it because it's so true. And yes. I find, and it's, uh, um, I know, uh, right, like right now, um, there's so much change going on in my life for the better um, that I get uh, irritated with the ho hum. Let's put it that way. The the, you know, well, we've done it this way or this or that, and I'm going, okay, but I'm not staying here. I'm moving on, and you know, I would love to have you come with me, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So. I love you, but there's nothing wrong with me. Right. And, but that's a difficult position to take because our fear of being alone is so enormous that it's, it's fear that keeps us from making the change. Mm-hmm. So I kind of approached it you know, in a fairly logical way. I said, okay, when, when I moved to Santa Fe, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, in a very poor state. People in Santa Fe always say, you can't make a living in Santa Fe. So I moved here after I had, I, after I had started doing business online. And I did that 22 years ago. Wow. So um, I've been online, doing online, because I knew that I couldn't make a living necessarily in Santa Fe. And right. this is where I wanted to move. So um, as, and I moved here with $200 in whatever fit in my car. That was a little easier than giving everything away. (laughs) I now had this little pile, but I trusted that I was doing the right thing. I had learned to listen to that inner voice, right? So when I got here, I fit right into the local consciousness and culture because everybody here was having trouble (laughs) making a living. And as I started making more money, the people in my spiritual group started treating me differently. Mm. You know, I was suddenly the go-to person if someone needed money. And, you know, so what I made a conscious effort to do was to become friends with people who were above me on the income level ladder. Uh, We happen to have this enormous dog park here with these mile-long trails. And I go up to dog park every day. So I meet people who I wouldn't normally meet in my everyday life. And I've made friends with some very wealthy people, uh, some really wealthy people. But the dog park brings us all down to the same level because right. we all got to pick up the dog poop. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, uh, it's an equalizer, right? And, and so I learned how to be with wealthy people without feeling less than – and without thinking that they had more than me. You know, and, that's a great attitude because I think a lot of business owners, uh, um, for the most part, I mean, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to say the most because from what I've seen, most business owners will go after, business-wise, the people who they think, they don't go after, let's put it this way, let's turn it the other way around. They don't go after the people who have money. 
because they have a bad self-image of themselves. And so why would anybody do business with me? Because I don't make that kind of money. Well, or, or, or there's another aspect. Yeah. They go after people with money and they don't understand the, the mindset yes. of yeah. people with money. They think that people with money want to spend the money. No, the reason they're wealthy is because they don't spend it. <laughs> yeah, but they don't and, mind spending the money as long as you can create the value exactly. for them. So they know right. they're going to pay more, and they're willing to pay more because I've seen uh, instances where, uh, like I have a friend who's a contractor, and, and he went and gave a price to uh, a lady on doing some remodeling. And she just looked at him out flat and says, honey, you're too cheap. I right. know you're stealing from me somewhere and and so it's understanding the mindset right. of wealthy people. I mean, I I was lucky. I had two brothers who became very wealthy, so I could see it right up close. Yeah. But I also recognized that when I was with wealthy people, other than my brother, that there was a certain neediness that I had that they could smell a mile away. Mm -hmm. because, because people with money know when you're, when you're needy. They do. It, I mean, it, there's it's a radar. Hilarious. It is. Yes, it's there's like a that, radar. Yep, yes. they have a radar. And, you know, it's kind of funny because even when I needed, like when I first started out in business, I knew, I knew enough to know that um, we were always – whether I needed to work or not, we were always booked two weeks in advance. Yeah. Always. But okay. the caveat was, you know, if something comes up, you know, someone calls and cancels or they want to postpone, then I'll put you at the top of the list. And they go, okay. So, and, you know, I would never call the next day. I'd wait three or four or five days and say, hey, you know, you're in luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and, and people, you know, I see so many coaches being sold a bill of goods about selling to high-end clients when they have no idea what it's like inside of that high-end client. Right. You got to know how to talk to them. You got to know how to right. interact right. with them. You got to know how they think, what they want, what they drive, right. why they do things. And then you may have the opportunity to sell to them. But, yeah. But, but see, there again... That's a whole learning process, and and let's face it, you know, a lot of times we just as business owners get lazy. Yes, and you have you have to you have to be focused. Mm -hmm. You have to focus on what you want and how to get there. The people, one of my my one of my brothers who was a successful businessman, he said, you know, he always set goals but never reached them because they changed along the way. Right, and. Right. He he was always learning new stuff. In those days, it was uh, Nightingale Conan uh, tapes when he was because he was in sales, you know, and he just listened to everything that he could. And the and he said to me the uh, recently he said the people who get wealthy are the ones who are willing to work harder. Right. Yeah. And it's not just working harder because you can work a lot of hours and and not necessarily get ahead. And you brought up something before where you said fear of success. Right. But also we have that, you know, with weight, people have a set point where they, they have a weight point where they, if they gain more, they'll get back to the set point. If they lose, they'll get back to the set point. And it's the same thing with money. We have a, a set point. Um, I, you know, I, for years, I was really comfortable with making $60,000 a year. Right. But I, I had to become aware that that was a problem. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I, I was just started reading somebody's book, and they said, uh, he said, I believe in the zero philosophy. And I'm going, what yeah. the heck is a zero philosophy? He goes, just add a zero. Yeah. Just add I a remember. zero, yeah. He said, yeah. so, because he said one of his uh, coaches asked him, you know, well, what do you want to make? He goes, uh, $50,000 a year. And he goes, are you kidding me? You just need to add a zero. Could you be happy with five hundred thousand a year? He goes, well, yeah. Well, it's just as easy to make the five hundred as it is the fifty. It, it, it well, I mean, you just ha you have to yeah. think differently. You have to yeah. be able to expand your mind. Right. And and the problem with a lot of business owners is they try to do it alone. I agree. 
you can't because yeah. and and one of the main reasons you can't is because you I myself have gotten me to this point so far and I honestly don't know how to get farther. But you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And there's a lot and, of stuff I don't know. And, and the more I learn, the more I realize of what I don't know. Right. Right. And, and there's so many levels to it. Unfortunately or fortunately, humans are very complex. Yes, we are. We are. That's the and everybody's part. looking – everyone's looking for that simple solution, right? Yeah. Or they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll call me about coaching and they want to know how long is this going to take? It's <laughs> going to take until you get it. And it could take the rest of your life. Yeah. You're going to be working on this because as soon as you reach a certain point, you're going to say – and the idea is to get to that certain point, to not long for the next point, but to say, okay, what is my challenge now? Because I don't want to be bored. And once it's easy to make $100,000 a year profit – well, then what do I have to do to make it more challenging? Not because I need the money, right. but because I want the challenge. Yeah, because yeah, it's, 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 the money, I mean, I know that the money has always come. I don't really chase them. I like it. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. I don't chase it. <laughs> right. Um, but right. it comes by, just by doing whatever I do. So this is really awesome. So from what I'm, I'm – you're helping – uh, people get from realizing where they are to helping them to get where they might, where they want to be. And I think that's... And who the, they want to be. And who they want to be. who they want to be. I know, In other yeah, words... You said that before, because a lot of times uh, mm. we have a tendency to I want to be like Bob. Yeah. You know, right. well, I don't want to be like Bob. I want to be the <laughs> best Dave that Dave can be. Um, right. So how do... So, you know, that's what I want to know is I want to know how to do that. And I think that's pretty awesome. So tell us how – and I know you have a bunch of – because I was spent a good half hour on your website before we talked today just going through stuff. And you have a ton of great information. And you're basically breaking – helping people break the bonds from the past to create a new future. That's a beautiful way of saying it. I think I'll lose that, use that line. All right, no, I gave you two great things today. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And, um, I mean, you're fabulous. You're, you, you do great, great conversation, and obviously you're comfortable. I can tell from talking to you that you're comfortable with your life. Oh, I am. I am one of the most blessed men in the world. I have um, a great family. Um, and I have great grandkids and great daughters. I have a wonderful wife, and uh, I have great friends. And you know, I have good money, but that's that's the last thing. That's a side effect. That's the side effect. Yeah, because yes. I've been I've been rich, and I've been broke, and I've been back to getting there again. So it doesn't matter. Those are all. It's just a process that keeps us growing. So how? And yes. How can people reach me? That. Prosperityplace.com is the main site. Okay. Um, if people want to talk to me about possibly working with me on some level, um, you know, they just have to go to prosperityplace.com slash call, and I'll have a conversation with you. That's awesome. And, and um, I, I love to talk to people, <laughs> as, as, as you do. You like yes, to talk to people, I too. Do. Right. And because I learn so much each time I talk to someone new and I have my courses at prosperityplace.com slash programs. And my goal is to help people live happier, healthier, more prosperous lives awesome. and, to, and to get all that stuff out of the way that's holding you back. One of, one of the things in, in, in closing, because this has really been an awesome conversation and it, it, one of the seminars I was at, it was just um, – Lately, and it was on it was on uh, mindset and stuff. Like, uh, mindset, and one of the most interesting things that I had never thought about before, because we get into situations where, you know, where we talk about success, but we're afraid of success, or we're afraid of not becoming successful. Man, it just becomes a whole mixed bag of nuts. But you know, like uh, uh, a stay-at-home mom, they want a business, but they have their kids, and they don't want it to interfere with their kids. And so they will give up uh, the business to, to, to be with their kids. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that is awesome. But the speaker says, well, why can't you have both? 
Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and, you know, that was so profound. Just that, why can't you have both? Right. Because you, you, it, you've, in your mind, in our minds, we've created an either-or scenario. We haven't right. given our mind a chance to figure out, how can we have both? Right. It's both, not, or, not, yeah. not a choice. Yes. And, I mean, <clears throat> I love living a peaceful life. Very happy with my life. Four o'clock, com- four o'clock comes around. People call me and they leave a message on the on the answering machine. Oh, it's after four. You're probably at dog park because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they know, they know you. Yeah, they yeah. know I have to go for my walk every single day, and it's very the exercise is important to me. And you just have to, I, you know, I don't care if I'm not a multimillionaire. No. I care about living a peaceful life. That's what matters for me. Right. And you found a way to do it, and you're helping other people do the same thing. This has really been awesome. Thank you so much for being willing to share with our audience and with me, because I get a lot out of this, too. And uh, so we will uh, get you all set and ready to go uh, with our audience. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast with Dave Negri. We would love to hear your comments about this episode, so visit us online at www.contractorsecretweapon.com and let us hear your thoughts. If you were listening via iTunes, please leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive, the more other contractors will benefit from this show. Thank you, and see you next time here on the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast.